Good morning. So um, I was asked to take a quick look at financial math, so I'll, I'll do that now. Um, there's, there's three different types of financial maths questions that tend to come up, okay? So I'll break the board into three different zones. So there is common sense. There's tax. And then there is um, FPIT. Specifically, I'm going to call tax here income tax. Now, income tax includes um, PRSI, PAYE, and USC. So you need to be able to um, deal with each of those three things. So with tax, there's a kind of a, um, a systematic approach. So there's a system that we have to use when it comes to tax, okay? And that usually is we break our tax, we break our entire salary into the different bands. For USC, there's, um, there's three bands, okay? And this band up here, well, that will get taxed at, so, at such a percentage. This band here might get taxed at 5%, and this band down here might get taxed at something like 2%. So you have to work out how much money is in each band for USC. Um, if we're talking about, um, not USC, but if we're talking about, um, if we're talking about just plain income tax, uh, PAYE, we can have our salary again, and this time we usually break it into two bands, and we tax the bottom one usually at the, the lower rate of 20%, the higher one at 40%, and then there's a bit more to that, okay? So that's the type of systems that are in place for tax. For FPIT, so you need to be able to spot that you're in an FPIT question. And when you're in an FPIT question, money will either be growing or money will be shrinking. So if it's growing, we've probably put into something like a bank account or some investment fund, and our money grows year on year on year. So when it's growing, we use the compound interest formula And when it's shrinking, we use the depreciation formula. And that tends to be how those questions are set up, with using, using deciding which of these two formulas to use. So and that's the two of the three done. Common sense, I can't really talk about common sense because it's going to be questions like um, a a pizza costs 20% less during a sale, what's the price of the pizza? So you just need to be able to work out 20% of the original price, okay? It's, it's, that's why I call them common sense questions. They're not really, there's, there's no kind of system to them. There is definitely a system to tax and to FPIT, okay? But when it comes to these things over here, you're just gonna have to use your percentages or use the skills that you have from other parts of the course. Um, now I'm gonna take a look, first of all, now, I'll go onto my iPad and I'll take a look at a common sense question, I'll take a look at a tax question, and I'll take a look at an FPIT question. Um, yeah, as you do more and more of these questions, you'll start to see kind of the strategies involved, okay? So don't panic about them yet, and also, they are highly likely to come up, okay? There will probably be something on money on your course, okay? So just be aware of that. So it's well worthwhile studying these. Um, okay, so I'll see you on the iPad now. Good morning. Um, this morning we're going to be taking a look at <clears throat> um, some financial maths questions, the actual questions themselves, just to give you an idea of what of how I approach them. Um, and I suppose I would just like to say thank you to StudyClicks for um, providing this resource here this morning. Okay. Um, right. Um, what colour we go? We go for blue. It's a nice colour. Okay, so let's start this. So Emer earns a gross wage of forty thousand per annum with Company A. So in total, the amount of money she gets to earn is forty thousand. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to represent that as one big lump of money. So that's just one great big chunk of money. That forty thousand. 
Um, okay, so that's that taken care of. Emer pays income tax at a rate of 20% on income up to the standard rate cutoff. So somewhere in here, there's going to be a line that's the standard rate cutoff. Okay, so this thing here, that's the standard rate cutoff. I'm not sure where that is yet. So let's take a look in the question. Oh, there it is there. Um, the standard the standard rate cutoff point of 35,300. So I now know that that point there is 35,300. So every single cent up to there is 35,300. And because there's 40,000 in the entire amount, well, that means up here, there's only going to be, um, what, 4,700? Okay, because if I add, if I add this thing onto this thing, I should get 40K. I better just double check that. My arithmetic is not great. 4,700 plus 35300 equals, yeah. So that's good, okay? So that's the setup so far. So we've, we've broken our total gross earnings into two different zones. This zone up here and this zone down here. Now, reading the question, we have two different tax rates. She pays a tax rate of 40% on the remainder, and she pays 20% up to the standard rate cutoff. So therefore, every single cent, every single cent in here is always taxed at 20%. And every single cent in here is going to be taxed at 40%. So let's work out those figures. So to get 40% of uh, 4,700, I simply multiply 40% by 4,700. So it's uh, 1880. And down here we have 35300 multiplied by 20%. And that gives me 7060. Okay. So, Emer is going to have to pay this amount of tax, <coughs> excuse me, and she's also going to have to pay this amount of tax. We could work out our total tax that she could end up paying. What do you think we would have to do to these two figures to work out how much tax she could end up paying? She's definitely going to have to pay that, and she's definitely going to have to pay that. To find out what she could end up paying in total, how would we work that out? Yeah, we're going to add those two together. So it's 1880 plus 7060 equals, that's 8940. Now, some technical language here, just like <clears throat> the full 40,000, just like the full 40,000, we called that the gross wage, it's because it's the big wage before anything is taken away from it. We call this thing here the gross tax. So that's the gross tax. That's the amount of tax that we, we could end up paying or Emer could end up paying before anything gets taken away from that. Okay, now, if, if the government charges Emer 8,940, we wouldn't live in a fair society because Emer prob probably has some, some stuff that Emer is doing that's good for society. So to kind of make the system a bit more fair, some people are given more tax credits than other people. So Emer's tax credits are 1,650. So it's 1,650. Now, these things here, these tax credits, they reduce, they're going to reduce the amount of money that you would otherwise have to end up paying. She would have had to pay these things here if she lived in an unfair society. Okay, But because the government realises that, well, everyone is a little bit different and everyone has slightly different needs, we're going to introduce these things called tax credits. So these tax credits here kind of help out people um, who need a bit of extra help. That's, that's a very loose example of what a tax credit is for, okay? Um, it's not really important for us. All we need to know is that tax credits reduce the amount of tax you could end up paying. I might label those as tax credits. <clears throat> now, so because they reduce because they reduced the gross tax, we're obviously going to take them away. So eight, um, eight, nine, 
four zero minus one six five zero equals seven two nine zero. So that's the amount of tax that she will actually have to end up paying. So she will have to end up paying seven thousand two hundred ninety euro. Find how much income tax she pays per annum. That's it there. So job done. And just like we would call this figure up here gross tax, technically we can call this guy down here net tax. So the question could have said, find how much income tax she pays per annum. It could have said, find her net tax. Okay, so that's the technical word for 7290 there. That's her net tax. Hmm. Okay, so that's the first part done. Um, maybe just review that again. Her total amount of money is her gross tax, okay? And that's that's everything that's in that bar there. And we break that bar into two different zones. There's the top zone and there's the, the lower zone, okay? The lower zone is taxed at a different rate than the higher zone. So this zone up here is taxed at 40%. This zone down here is taxed at 20%. The amount of tax she could end up paying at the 40% one is this one up here. The amount of tax she could end up paying at the standard one is this one down here. To find out her gross tax, we're going to add the two together. And we can reduce the tax, we can reduce the gross tax by subtracting the tax credits. And that gives us, us that gives us her net tax. Um I've just realized something. My iPad is in portrait. So I'm now going to go into landscape mode. My apologies for it on your screen. The Sorry about that. I should have twigged that earlier. Okay. Imer pays her health insurance, with, which costs her 1,500 euro net. Find her annual income after income tax and health insurance. So find her, find her, ooh, what's going on there? Okay. Find her annual income after paying income tax and health insurance. Inger pays her health insurance, which costs her fifteen hundred euro. Per, which costs her fifteen hundred euro net. Okay, so she did earn forty thousand. She's going to have to pay seven two nine zero. So therefore, we take seven two nine zero away, and she's also going to have to pay one five zero zero. So we can do that to sum in our calculator. 40, 1, 2, 3, minus 7, 2, 9, 0, minus 1, 5, 0, 0, equals 3, 1, 2, 1, 0. So that's the amount of money she gets to keep. <clears throat> now, this was kind of one of those common sense questions I was talking about earlier. There's no kind of real system to this. You just need to know that because it's a tax, we take it away, and because it's an expense, we take it away. You you should kind of you should kind of just get that, okay. Part C. Emer is planning to change jobs. She is offered a job by Company B with a gross wage of thirty eight thousand and a bonus of fifteen hundred to be paid by the company, which she would use to pay her health insurance. Her tax rates and credits would remain the same. Find by how much Emer's net income, net annual income after paying income tax and health insurance, will increase if she adopts the job. With company B. Okay, so she has 38,000. So let's put that into a big box. 38,000 there. Okay, and that's the full amount that she earns. And we know that there's a standard rate cutoff around here of 33500. I'll just double check that figure. And it's. Okay, so I've actually I've gone wrong there. It's three. So it's three, five, three, zero, zero. So that's the standard rate cut off. In the entire thing here, there is now thirty eight thousand. So in this part up here, there is um <laughs> two thousand seven hundred. And in this part down here, there is 35,300. 
We tax this part up here. We tax this part up here at 20%. We tax this part down here at 40%. Error. We tax down here at 20% and up here at 40%. So I work out those percentages. So it's going to be 1080 zero, zero, and it's going to be 35300 zero, zero, multiplied by 20% equals 7060. Zero, zero. And then to find out how much tax she could end up paying, we will add those two together. Plus 1080 zero, zero, equals 8140. Zero. So that's the amount of tax that she could end up paying. There it is there. But she won't end up paying that amount of tax. She's going to end up paying that amount of tax because that's her gross tax. She'll end up paying that less her tax credits, which were 1650. Which is 6490. So that's the amount of tax credits. So that's the amount of tax she's going to have to pay income tax. Okay, now, the company then, mm, so how do we tackle this part here? Let's see what question we were actually asked to do. Find by how much Emer's net annual income after paying income tax and health insurance will increase if she accepts the job with company B. Okay, so let's think about this. So this 1500 here, she doesn't really get to see that in this example. So technically what's happening is she pays that amount of income tax and that gets her salary down to 38 minus 6490, which is equal to 31510. So that's the amount of income tax. So that's the amount of money she gets to keep. Okay. But she also gets 1500. And then she gives the 1500 away. So we take that away. And that's the amount of money she gets to keep. So she gets to keep 31510. So in this system, that's her, um, that's her net income. In this question up here, her net income was 31210. So the difference is 31510 minus 31210. And that's 300 euro. So in in um in part when she's working for company b she's 300 euro when she's working for company b she's 300 euro better off at the end of the year okay so that's 2019 question one um yeah so that's one of those tax questions Okay, so it's one of the three I was talking about earlier. There was tax, common sense, and there was FPIT. That was a tax question, okay? And it's based on this idea that we break the entire amount of money into different bands or different zones. Okay, the next question is 2018 um, question one. And this is gonna be one of those common sense types of questions. So we just need to be able to think about it. And if we think about it in a, in a way that's good, we should be able to answer the question. There's kind of no systematic approach to answering these. So let's read through it. When Sean joined a sales company, he was offered a choice of two different salary contracts. The details of the contracts are outlined in the table below. So it could be on contract A or contract B. Now, um, Find how much Sean would earn under each contract in a year where his total sales were 400,000. Okay, so Sean is going to get 
35,000 anyway. Because that's his, that's his kind of base salary. But he's also going to get commission. He's going to get commission of 2% of 400,000. So let's work that out. So it's 35,000. Plus, so it's 35,000. Plus, how do we work out 2%? Of 400,000 again. Well, that's 2%. What do we do to the 2% and the 400,000? Yeah, we multiply. So on our calculator, we hit the mul we hit the percent button and the multiply button to give us this thing in here. Plus, um, start bracket, 2% multiply by 4,000. And that's going to give us 43,000. So the amount of money Sean gets to keep is 43,000, or the amount of money he, he earns in that year is 43,000 if he works for contract A. Let's take a look at contract B now. So this time he gets 30,000. So if he makes no sales at all, he's going to get 30,000 anyway. Okay, But he'll also get some extra money because he made some sales. So it's going to be 3% of 400,000. And that's going to equal um, 30,000 plus 3% multiplied by 4 equals 42,000. Okay, so um, he would obviously choose contract A if he thinks he's going to make sales of 400,000. Um, okay. Another employee, Mary, earned 50,000 in a particular year. She's in contract A. Find her total sales for that year. Okay. So Mary earns 50,000. Now, Mary's salary is broken into two, sorry, Mary's income is broken into two different areas. There's the 35,000. But there's also the commission. So there's the 50,000 that's broken into the, the original 35,000 plus the commission. So that means that the commission must equal 15,000. Now, because the commission corresponds to 2%, well then 2% of sales must equal 15,000. So if 2% of the sales is 15,000, what do we do to get 100% of the sales? Well, if 2% of sales is 15,000, 1% of sales must equal 15, 1, 2, 3, all over 2. And therefore, 100% of sales must equal 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, all over 2, multiplied by 100. And that's going to equal... Seven five zero one two three. So three quarters of a million euro, she sold. Again, this wasn't a system that I knew before I tackled this question. I was just able to use my understanding of percentages to answer these types of questions. So that's why I call these the common sense type of questions. There's no way I can kind of give you a system that you're going to use to answer these. Find the total sales for which a salesperson would earn the same amount of money under each contract. Okay, so that's quite a tough question here. Um, so we know that contract A, contract A, um, let's say that let's say that refers to the total income you get in contract A. Contract A is equal to thirty-five thousand 
plus 35,000 plus um, 35,000 plus 2% um, plus 2 plus 2% of sales. And we want contract B to equal 30,000 plus 3% of sales. Okay, so that's 35,000 plus 2% multiplied by S. And we want to know when is that equal to 30,000 plus 3% multiplied by S. So that's 35,000 plus 2s over 100. So it's 2 one hundredths of s. So it's 2 one hundredths because it's 2%. So it's 2 one hundredths of s. So it's 2 over 100 multiplied by s is equal to 31, 2, 3, plus 3s all over 100. That's 3 one hundredths of s. I'm then going to get my s's onto one side and my numbers on the other side. So let's go this way. So 35, 1, 2, 3, minus 30,000 must equal 3s over 100 minus 2s over 100. So s over 100 will equal 5,000. And that's an S, by the way, not a 5. Maybe I should make those a bit clearer for you. Maybe if I make them in red or something. So that's an S. That's an S. That's an S. That's an S. And that's an S. Okay. So S by itself... S by itself must equal... 5, 1, 2, 3 times 100. S is equal to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 500,000 is when they both match up. A really, really tough question there, okay? So anywhere at ordinary level where we have to introduce variables is a really, really tough question. Okay? So let's take a look at what question number that was. Question one, kind of a tough question for question one, all right. Um, you could tackle that question as well by just kind of guessing. It, at 400,000, they were still too low. So you might try, I don't know, 500,000 and it would work out for you. But that's probably not the best way of doing it. The best way of doing it is to introduce a variable called S for sales. Okay, so that's the, that's the kind of common sense approach. Guys, if you could answer part A and part B, you know, you'd be doing really, really well, okay? Don't be too worried about these really difficult questions. They will be on the paper, but, you know, just just do your best with them. Pick up as many marks as you can with them. But you should be aiming to get full marks in the part A's and the part B's. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at the 2017 question one. So this is this is going to be an FPIT question. So, so far we've looked at a tax question and a common sense question. We're now going to take a look at an FPIT question. So F pit, let's write that up anyway. F, P, I, and T. So let's read through it. Um, a new machine is bought for 30,000. Its value depreciates by 15% each year for five years. So that's how I knew it was going to be an F pit question because we have a sum of money that's either growing or shrinking. If it's shrinking, it's depreciating. So I'll just get my maths tables. So we're in financial maths. So we go to the financial maths page which is on um, page 20, I think, is it? No, um, page, page 30. So we go to page 30, and here we have FPIT. So the formula we're going to use for depreciation, because it depreciates, we're going to use the depreciation formula. So we're going to use the formula um, F equal to p by 1 minus i all to the power of t. 
So in this question here, there's going to be f, p, i, and t. So f stands for future value. So that's what it will turn into. So a new machine is bought for 30,000. So that's what it started out at. So that's going to be our p. Our interest rate is 15%. But that's, needs, that needs to be expressed as a decimal, so it's 0 0.15. Our t is going to be 5 years, so that's going to be 5. It's very important that that commodity, years, matches up with the interest rate that it's quoted for. So it's interest rate for years, and it's for 5 years, okay? So we then throw that into our formula, so we say f is equal to 30,000 by 1 minus 0 0.15 all to the power of 5. We bang that into our calculator. And that gives us F is equal to 13311.16 euro. So the machine turns into that amount of money. So it started out as that, and it turned into that. Okay, next job. A sum of money was invested for two years at 3% compound interest per year. So it's 3% compound interest per year. Okay, that's quite nice. So again, we have money this time increasing. So we're going to use F is equal to P by 1 plus I all to the power of T. So this time there's a plus because the money is growing. So we're using the compound interest formula on page 30. So it's F, P, I, T. F is equal to, at the end of the two years, it amounted to 30,000. So at the end, it was 30,000. P is going to be where the question mark goes. I is the interest rate, so that's 0 0.03. And T is going to be two years. So it's 30,000. Is equal to let's call it p by one plus zero point zero three all to the power of two. I'm looking for p, so I can turn this whole thing here into just some number. So let's write that out. Thirty thousand is equal to p times uh, one plus zero point zero three, and this equals to the power of two equals. 1.0609 so p by itself will equal 30,000 all over 1.0609 so 30,000 divided by 1.0609 equals so p is equal to 28277.88 euro So we put that amount of money in, and it turns into that amount of money. And we could do a really quick test. We could multiply that by 1.03, and I multiply it by 1.03 again, and we get 30,000. Yeah, okay. Um, Question 1, part C. A company invested 25000 for three years at a fixed rate of compound interest. At the end of the three years, it amounted to that. Find the rate of interest. So we have money. We have money. And that money is growing. So we're in here again. So we're going to use our compound interest formula. So we go F, P, I, T. F is what it turns into. So that's 26530. P is what it starts out at, 25000. I is going to be question mark, and T is going to be 3. So let's set it up into a formula. F is equal to P by 1 plus I all to the power of T. So 26530 is equal to 25123 by 1 plus um, I all to the power of 3. Okay, now, this is kind of a tricky one here, because I want to get access to this I. I currently cannot go anywhere near that I because we're currently multiplying it. It's in brackets and there's a power on it. So we need to get rid of this thing, this thing, and this thing. The, the easiest thing to get rid of, first of all, is going to be the 25,000. So we have one 
plus i all to the power of 3, and that's going to equal, well, the 25,000, this guy here, he's multiplying on the right-hand side. So to get rid of multiplying on the right-hand side, I'm going to divide on the left-hand side. So I end up with 2, 6, 5, 3, 0, all over 2, 5, 1, 2, 3. So we now have 1 plus i cubed is equal to 2, 6, 5, 3, 0, divided by 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, equals SD. 1.0612. So 1 plus i is equal to the cube root of 1.0612. Sorry, I should have explained that. To get rid of cubing on this side, I take the cube root. Now the cube root means we have to open up the special button. So you're looking for a button on your calculator that looks like this. So you're probably going to have to go shift and shift and power, something like that, okay? So um, cube root of 1.0612 equals, so we're left for 1.01999 is equal to 1 plus i. So i must equal... 1.01999 minus 1, so i is equal to <clears throat> 0 0.01999. And we would never leave an interest rate as a decimal. We would also say that's equal to 0. We would, also, we would always say that's equal to 1.2%. So to go from here to here, I multiply by 100. Um, I just did something weird on my calculator there. Um, I'll try that again. Equals minus 1 equals, multiply that by 100, equals SD. Sorry, completely got that wrong. <laughs> so you should always check your answer. So it's 1.999%. Sorry, I had a bit of a, a, um, a lapse in concentration there. And that's effectively 2%. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the three different types of financial maths questions you can be asked. Ones where you have to just think about them hard enough, and I call them common sense ones. And then there's other ones that are kind of, there's a system to them. So the tax system and the FPIT system. Tax system should be fairly obvious when we're going to use the tax system. We're talking about income tax. We're talking about USC. We're talking about PAYE, these kind of buzzwords. And then for the more um, FPIT questions, we're either going to have money that's either going to be growing or shrinking. So that's, um, that's financial maths, really. Um, so keep trying them, guys, and you should, you, should, you should start getting better at them. Okay?